Hey guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In our office we're all big boxing fans and in the excitement for the massive fight between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz Jr this weekend, we were having a look at some of the promotional materials for the fight. This gave us the idea to create this tutorial video on how to create the impactful gold metallic text being used in these designs. Let's head onto the computer now and we'll show you our process. Okay so here we are in Illustrator and as usual guys you can download this exact same template file from the link in the description and follow along from home you'll get everything we're working with here and so we'll start with the examples of the posters we're looking at today so the one on the left is the poster being used to advertise the upcoming fight between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz Jr we like this design we're particularly taken by the metallic gold text they're using however when we were looking into this we found the poster for their last fight and we actually really like the text that they used for their names here so we're actually going to do a combination of the two. We're really focusing on this gold metallic look that they've created and on the example on the right hand side you can see the text has kind of been split as well. It's got a diagonal line running through it so we're getting this quite interesting split gradient look. Over on the left hand side is the example that we are going to be creating. You can see this is all vectorized. So let's jump straight into this and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup this so that we've got our two individual individual sections of text. Now we're going to be using the freeform gradient to create this. Now if you haven't seen our other video on using freeform gradients we go into a little bit more detail about them and how to use them in different scenarios so do check that out before you look at this if you want to know a bit more about them. But what we can do is apply it to this text. Now the best way we've found to apply freeform gradients to text is to actually use a clipping mask. So what I'm going to do first is grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle out. As long as it's covering all of the text it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to change the colour of this just for contrast here. We'll just choose a brown colour. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to send this to the back. So right click, arrange, send to back. And what I need to do is make sure that our text is a compound path. So this is just outlined text as well. I should note there's nothing else that's been done to it. These are just free fonts we're using that are close to the examples we were looking at in the posters. They're not exactly the same but they're close enough but we've outlined this text it's obviously all grouped together but to do this I need to go to object compound path and make you can see the shortcut is command 8 that's a handy one to know and now I can click and drag over the rectangle and the text right click and choose make clipping mask and this just means that the rectangle is only going to appear within the text and we can now go and apply our freeform gradient now in terms of the colors for the gradient there's a few things to note what we are are going to do is use our eyedropper tool to take roughly the same gold color that they're using in the posters as reference. Just be aware that when we do this we're not going to take a selection of different shades of this color and the reason for this is because these are just raster images if we zoom in you can see there are actually some weird pixelation and color shifts when you go right into the text here so if we try and color pick different shades of it from this example you get some pretty strange effects sometimes and it doesn't work nearly as well. So what I'm going to do is just grab my rectangle tool and just drag out a box. It can be any size. This is really just for reference. Now I'm going to press I on my keyboard for the eyedropper tool. You can also find it on the left hand side toolbar. I'm actually going to look for the darkest shade of this gold. So probably somewhere around the, the D or the U here. I'll just click within here and that looks like a pretty good option here. I could equally double click on my fill square here and slightly adjust this maybe make it slightly darker still actually give it a little bit more saturation I think this will work slightly better and now what I'm going to do is drag out some copies of this so holding option or alt on a PC click and drag and I'm going to drag out a few options here we'll maybe go with five I'll select our second one along and now I'm going to use my color guide panel so I already have this set up on the right hand side if you don't just go to window and then we have color guide within the window menu and as you can see up at the top we now have options for shades and tints of this color and this is a just a slightly better way to create this effect it means we're not getting any hue shifts and it just looks a little bit more accurate when we're trying to create this metallic look so what I'm going to do is just double click on the next shade along and I'll just keep doing this 
for each of these tints here. Okay, so I'm just going to take this over to our right hand artboard over here and we can just use these as reference. And really, if we go back and look at the poster example, this is a fairly simple gradient being used on the Clash on the Dunes text here. You can see it's slightly lighter along the bottom, but up in the top right hand side, we've got a bit of a highlight going on, which uh, really gives it that metallic look. So this should be a fairly simple one to create. So all I need to do to edit our rectangle that we're clipping to the text is double click onto the text, double click again, and you'll see we're left just with our rectangle. Now I'm going to double click our gradient tool and we're going to select the freeform gradient option within our gradient type and that's going to automatically apply some colors here. So it's always a random assignment, I think, with this. Now I'm gonna go back over to my properties panel. Now what I can do here is I have the draw setting set to lines. Now this is important, like we were looking at in the example, we've got a slightly lighter gradient running along the bottom and it's ever so slightly darker on the top. So what I'll actually do is just get rid of the other points. I'll maybe leave the one in the top right hand corner and I'll set this this to a point. I'm going to double click on this and then I just want to grab my eyedropper tool and then I'm going to take the lightest option, so that was the lightest area of that option. I'm going to select our other point down here and just delete that as well. We'll kind of start from scratch. Double click on our existing one on the left hand side. Again, grab my eyedropper tool and we'll go with, I think, potentially the second darkest option and then I'm going to go back to my lines draw type here and if I click on this point, you can see we get a line extruding out and then I can simply plot a few more color options here. I think this is going to stay pretty consistent though. I'll maybe double click on our middle one here and make this slightly darker just to see what that looks like. There is a little bit of trial and error involved with this and now I'm going to plot some more colors along the bottom here. So again just clicking to add new points. What I'll do is I'll select this color first and that means any new points we create will match that color. So for this option I'm going to go for the middle color that we created here. So I'm just going to click on this point again and we'll get the the line again extruding out. I'm just going to plot this along here like so. I think that'll do. I'll press escape now and now I can just double click out of this and you can see we're getting quite an effective look already. Now to keep our other text consistent with this we're going to use the same palette here and this is just going to give a little bit more consistency to our design. What I need to do first with this text though is create the split going through it. So similar to the example we've got our versus text which is just going to stay white. So to split the text I'm just going to grab my line segment tool and click and drag a diagonal line through the text. Now I'm just going to grab my selection tool and we'll select both the line we've created and the text itself. I'm going to go to my Pathfinder advanced options so just click the three dots if you don't see them. Again if you don't have a Pathfinder panel open you can access it through window and you'll have Pathfinder within there. And then I'm going to use the divide option so it's leftmost option from the advanced options. So if I just click this once you won't see anything really changing yet. However if I click off and back on you can see when I hover over we have the line cutting through. Now the only thing to sort out before we start applying any color is if I double click into this text again into the group we actually have shapes that have been created within the middle of some of the characters. They don't have any fill or they don't have any color applied to them but when we go to apply a clipping mask they will start filling in basically. So what I can do is grab my magic wand tool up at the top here and if I just hover over one of the paths like so and click click that's going to select all of the matching objects and because we're in our isolation mode it's not going to select anything else on the artboard that has these same properties so I can just hit delete double click out of this and now we're just left with the text itself and now what I want to do is right click and ungroup because we want to separate the two sections. So I'm just going to click and drag across the top. The only other section I need to select here is the bottom section of the S and then the rest of the Ruiz text. So I'm just going to press Command G to group this or Control G on a PC. And then I'm gonna do the same with the bottom sections of text as well. And we're just going to apply the same process that we did for the Clash on the Dunes text. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. Again, just roughly dragging this so it's covering up the whole upper 
border section. Again, I'll just change the color. So again, I'm just right clicking, going arrange and send to back. And again, I want to make sure that this newly grouped section of text is a compound path. So I'm going to go up to object, compound path, make, and then we can create a clipping mask from this. So selecting the text and the rectangle, right click and make clipping mask. So this is actually already quite a cool effect, but we're now going to double click into our clipping mask here, double click again to get to the rectangle. We'll double click on our gradient here, and then again, we'll select the freeform gradient option. So again, we're getting some random colors placed in here by default. And I'm just going to scroll over to the example. So on the top section, on the older poster, we have the highlight areas in the top left of the text, really. The whole top section appears slightly darker than the bottom section. So it's going quite light in this top area. Again, slightly darker along the bottom and its darkest point is probably where the R is here. So that's where we'll place our darkest color and then it lightens up a little bit towards the end as well. Obviously, we're just trying to match the examples here, but you can really play about with this and try out your own things. As long as you're getting a nice smooth gradient, it's fairly easy to get this metallic look. So up in the top left, again, using my color picker, I'm going to select probably the second lightest option. We want the upper section to be slightly darker than the rest of it. Now we still have our line option here. So I'm actually going to switch to points and I'll reposition the one on the bottom left and we'll just make this slightly darker. So we'll probably go with the second darkest and I'm actually going to run this as a line across. So again, selecting that point, or I'll maybe go with something like that. I'm just going to delete these points for now. And I'm gonna switch back to our points option as well and drag this one across, double click around here, grab our eyedropper and select the darkest option. You can see it does a pretty good job of just blending with the rest of the points we've created. Now I just want to add another point on the right hand side, double click into here and I'll select a lighter option. It can be a bit tricky to actually see how it's looking, but I will double click out of this and we can always go back and make changes. So I think that's looking good for now. We'll do the bottom section and then compare the two and see if we need to make any adjustments. It's fairly easy to do this. So again, I'm grabbing my rectangle tool and just dragging over the bottom section of the text. And again, I'm just going to right click, arrange, send to back, select our bottom section of text, and then command eight to make this a compound path, control eight on a PC. We'll select the rectangle and the bottom section of text, right click and make clipping mask. And again, we'll just double click into this, double click twice, grab our gradient and set a freeform gradient. And again, I'm just going to remove some of these colors and then we'll just start from scratch. So again, if I scroll over for the bottom section of text, we've got our highlight area on the right hand side around where the I and the Z is. And then there's not really much happening. There's not much variation in highlights and tints for the rest of it. But again, we'll just see how this is looking. I'll double click on our initial point here, grab our eyedropper, and I'll probably go with the second darkest for down here. And then I'm going to just add a new point over on the right hand side, double click, grab our eyedropper, and I'm going to select the lightest option here. I'll add a new point, press G on my keyboard for the gradient tool, and then I can just add a new point within here, double click, grab my eyedropper, and I'm going to select the second darkest option here. What I'm going to do is double click on our left hand point as well, grab the eyedropper, and I'll probably go with a slightly lighter option. We'll maybe go with the middle option here, and that should help just lighten that up. And just add one more point in the middle here, double click, grab the eyedropper, and then I'm just going to select a slightly darker color just so the highlight area isn't quite so big. And I think this is pretty good. We could adjust the colors a little bit more, but we're still getting this feel of this split going through the Joshua Ruiz text. And I quite like this look. So there you have our technique to create some knockout gold metallic text in Adobe Illustrator. Let us know who your money's on for the big fight tomorrow. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time. Thank you.